Hi friends, it's Angie. Um, I usually take Saturdays off as the original Sabbath, but I don't get religious about it because Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath and, and he healed on the Sabbath and his apostles pulled corn to eat, things like that. So I don't get legalistic about it. So yesterday I worked a few hours, quite a few, and, um, and today I feel a bit compelled to do some work as well. So I will take a day off, and there's family stuff going on, there's um, birthdays and things. It's a very busy time, April, March and April, very busy time for birthdays amongst my clan. Um, but I just want to, again, you know, unashamedly use the word to stabilise and plan my day. Because... Um, I'm getting a lot of intel coming in by email and other means and it's kind of shocking it's kind of shocking so I will dare to update um, in the coming few days if Jesus allows <laughs> uh, but in the meantime I'm just gonna do some grounding and just check in with God some praise and worship and some continuation in the message so here we go if you haven't subscribed to this channel it's galloping up actually the first thousand is the hardest in creating a channel my other channel was heading towards 4,000 subs and that was heavily suppressed but this one has gone from 400 something to 880 something like that so do please subscribe if you haven't and ask others to because once you get to a thousand subs it tends to multiply itself it's much easier to get to get the word out the word out literally so it's a horrible rainy day in Ireland, and here we go. Let's have some praise and worship. I can't remember where we were on this, uh, but we'll just see. You come at the right time. Stay. 
back to that. I love that song as well. Well done, Christina. It's beautiful. And I will do a teaching about deliverance ministry. I know that I've been following closely the Brian Harvey situation and um, Nikki and T and so on. Um, and uh, so it's become apparent that John Wedger was alleged by Callie to be traveling to uh, London to participate in a deliverance service or ministry session with Kelly Diamond, second one. And so there's been some discussion about exorcism and Catholicism and so on. And the Catholics kind of cornered the movie market, the kind of uh, cornered the market on what is deliverance ministry. And we've got things like Rosemary's Babies. Andrew Gine posted the spinning head recently. She's got a fascination. He has a fascination for horror movies, which I tend to avoid. But um, if you take it back to the bare bones, it is just doing what I think Mark chapter 16 says, that if you believe and you're baptised, you can do the things that Jesus did, including casting out demons. You can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Um, you know, it even says you can raise the dead. I haven't done that yet, but I certainly have laid hands on the sick and seen miracles. Nothing to do with me, all glory to God. You know, somebody healed of deafness after 22 years, a baby healed of a hernia that the surgeon said was inevitably needed surgery and then it just got healed. And many, many, many healings. But casting out demons is is part of the ministry that Jesus commissioned, first of all, the apostles and then the believers. Um, so whilst I have still grave concerns about Mr. Wedger and his walk, uh, but that I don't want that to muddy the waters in terms of only a priest can do an exorcism. It's not... It's not necessarily like the movies. It's sometimes there's a thing, there is full demon possession, which is evident in my opinion in people like Hillary Clinton and others. Um, but there's also such a thing as demonic attachments, portals that have been opened through addiction or through trauma or through messing around with Ouija boards or contacting the dead or things that you didn't realize were open open doors to the dark side of the spirit world. The spirit world's very real. So, um, yeah, people, including myself, I, I don't believe a Christ, I don't personally believe a spirit-filled Christian can be demon-possessed because it's already occupied by the Holy Spirit. Sorry, you know, demons are evicted. But I do believe you can get kind of attachments if you, you know, just even, like I prefer to think of suicidal ideation like a spiritual attack it's it's not who i am it's something outside of me that can be prayed away and even infirmity um i i didn't mean to do it here but i might as well do it here infirmity i i have been through a month of really severe respiratory uh, illness and a lot of people can say it was your own fault you smoked but to be honest it's been an infirmity from infancy um, you know, and I didn't smoke and when I started at 11, but that, you know, one a day or something, but it was, you know, back in the 70s, that was stupid. 57, 60, 68, I must have started at 68, 1968, God. But that, the point I'm making is it's not, you can't just lay it all at the foot of cigarettes. But to be honest, I, I was only, hang, I was only staying out of hospital by faith and um i had a, I, I've, I've dealt with this all my life so i know i had a pleurisy stroke pneumonia on my left lung and i was having a deliverance ministry session online with talk new york and uh, and in the process of praying away grief and praying away anger um you know different different uh, issues and everything is first in the spirit and then in the body or in the in the world 
it healed. My first of all, my lung healed, just healed in a session online. Um, and I'd had an experience the week before. I'm having a few sessions of deliverance ministry with talk remotely, and when I remember certain traumas in my childhood, I get an instant tonsillitis. And I'm I'm not kidding. I could be in the I could be in full health. But if I'm trying to talk about something that's very, very traumatic, my throat closes over and, and hurts and gets every symptom of a full-blown tonsillitis. So the week before last, that I'd said to the people praying with me and ministering deliverance, I said to them, oh, God, I've got a tonsillitis and I recognise this. This is what I get when I try and disclose. And they prayed and within about five minutes that lifted instantly as well. So it's kind of like a lovely side effect of deliverance ministry is that you will experience some healing in your body, you know, as well as your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. Um, you know, just little by little, like, you know, clearly I still give a little bit of a foothold with uh, nicotine, you know, and, you know, I've transitioned. I'm not smoking cigarettes. I've transitioned onto tobacco and then perhaps next week a vape and then hopefully full deliverance from nicotine addiction you know nicotine in itself is maybe not, you know in its original plant form as tobacco was maybe not that bad but when it's chemicalized or when it becomes um an addiction then it's a it's an issue anything that anything just a minute josh i'm recording son i'll be out in about a while Oops, bang. Um, when it becomes something that, you know, if something's got you rather than you've got something, so for instance, some people can just enjoy a glass of wine and that's fine. For other people, it's like, oh, the bottle's open, you know, I'll have two or three more, whatever. Um, it's, you know, have you are you enjoying a glass of wine or is the wine bottle kind of got you by the nose. That's another thing I struggle with from time to time. So yeah, so deliverance ministry in itself is not a kooky, crazy thing. It's in the Bible. Um, it's particularly, I think, you know, Mark chapter 16, and by memory I'm saying that, but, you know, uh, if you believe and are baptized, rooted and grounded in the word, but just if you believe and are baptized, you, as a believer, can lay hands on the sick and have them recover. You can cast out demons in the name of Jesus, not, not as a party trick. You know, there were magicians and sorcerers that saw the disciples laying hands and casting out demons and healing the sick. They said, oh, how much do you want? We'll pay you for that gift. That's awesome. What a trick. No, it's not a trick. Um, but it's certainly not either something that just needs to be reserved for a Catholic exorcist. So I'll leave it at that for now, guys. Um, leadership in the church. If anyone wants to provide leadership in the church, good. But there are preconditions. This is, um, where are we? I think it's First Timothy 3 and 4. But there are preconditions. A leader must be well thought of committed to his wife, cool and collected, accessible and hospitable. He must know what he's talking about, not be over fond of wine. See, there's that thing about moderation. Not pushy, but gentle, not thin skinned and not money hungry. It's not money that's the root of all evil, it's the lust for money. He must handle his own affairs well be attentive to his own children and having their respect. For if someone is unable to handle his own affairs, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a new believer, lest the position go to his head and the devil trip him up, which happens so often when you get young ministers, they get saved and they want to open a church or start a worldwide ministry, but it's so easy for the devil to trip them up, get them exhausted, send some beautiful Jezebel type women across their path, uh, tempt them with excess, excess alcohol, excess, whatever it might be, uh, pornography, whoever, who knows? The devil has a whole arsenal of 
sins to try and trip up, especially leaders in the church. Lest the position go to, the, uh, go to his head and the devil trip him up. Outsiders must think well of him or else the devil will figure out a way to lure him into his trap. The same goes for those who want to be servants in the church. Serious, not deceitful. Not too free with the bottle, though again, moderation again. Not in it for what they can get out of it. They must be reverent before the mystery of the faith, not using their position to try to run things. Yeah, not using their position to try to run things. Let them prove themselves first. If they show they can do it, take them on. No exceptions are to be made for women. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Okay, same, yeah, all right. So he's just saying the same things apply. Same qualifications, serious, dependable, not sharp-tongued, and not over-fond of wine. Servants in the church are to be committed to their spouses, attentive to their own children. I'm convicted now because my son's just arrived and I'm doing this. And diligent in looking after their own affairs. Those who do this servant work will come to be highly respected, a real credit to this Jesus faith. I hope to visit you soon, but just in case I'm delayed, I'm writing this letter so you'll know how things ought to go in God's household. This God alive church bastion of truth. This Christian life is a great mystery, far exceeding, exceeding our understanding, but some things are clear enough. He appeared in a human body, was proved right by the invisible spirit, was seen by angels. He was proclaimed among all kinds of peoples, believed in all over the world and taken up into heavenly glory. Chapter six. My son was half an hour late, so boundaries, he's a grown man. He can wait while I just finish this. Teach with your life. The spirit makes it clear that as time goes on, some are going to give up on the faith and chase after demonic illusions put forth by professional liars. These liars have lied so well and for so long that they've lost their capacity for truth. They will tell you not to get married. They'll tell you not to eat this or that food. Perfectly good food God created to be eaten heartily. And with thanksgiving by believers who know better. There's a huge move towards veganism and vegetarianism at the moment which is not what the Bible teaches. Everything God created is good and to be received with thanks. Nothing is to be sneered at and thrown out. God's word and our prayers make every item in creation holy. Now, don't get that out of balance. There is still an argument for not eating pork in terms of it's one of the meats that does carry parasites. Um, shellfish as well, you know. Um, but uh, uh, there's also a reason for saying grace. It's not just a ritual. It's to bless the food you eat. Like the scripture also says that a believer can drink poison and not be harmed. And so anybody that's worried about being poisoned, say grace. <laughs> and God will sanctify the food you're eating and the drink. You've been raised on the message of the faith and have followed sound teaching. Now pass on this counsel to the followers of Jesus there and you'll be a good servant of Jesus. Stay clear of silly stories that got dressed up or get dressed up as religion. Like, like this exorcism has to be done by a Catholic priest and spinning heads and all that. <clears throat> Exercise daily in God. No spiritual flabbiness, please. Workouts in the gymnasium are useful, but a disciplined life in God is far more so, making you fit both today and forever. You can count on this. Take it to heart. 
This is why we've thrown ourselves into this venture so totally. We're banking on the living word, saviour of all men and women, especially believers. Get the word out. Teach all these things and don't let anyone put you down because you're young. Well, that doesn't apply to me, but that's okay. <laughs> Teach believers with your life, by word, by demeanour, by love, by faith, by integrity. Stay at your post, reading scripture, giving counsel, teaching. And that special gift of ministry you were given when the leaders of the church laid their hands on you and prayed, keep that dusted off and in use. They used to call me the puffing prophet. I think I've shared that before because <laughs> I smoked. But God still allowed me to move in the gifts, you know. How, how, what an awesome God. Um, yeah. Cultivate these things. Immerse yourself in them. The people will all see you mature right before their eyes. Keep a firm grasp on both your character and your teaching. What a lovely thing that is. What a lovely balance. What a lovely balance to, to stop the devil from tripping you up. Do a character... A checklist do a character integrity checklist on yourself on myself uh, don't be diverted just keep at it both you and those who hear you will experience salvation oh here comes breakfast how oh, lovely I'll be about five minutes thank you so much An omelette from my son, how lovely is that? Here we go, let's just finish with this. So thanks, have a great Sunday, and have a great week. God bless. Angela's cash is my blog is getting repaired. Well, it's working, but like having a lot of things taken down affected it, but that's being repaired. And Archives of Truth is an associate channel with um, lots of archives that were, you know, taken down, but also some very valuable other videos on SRA, CSA and MK Ultra. Um, yeah, you can
can find me you can find me here Twitter anti power Disney and uh, stay in touch thank you to those who are emailing me and I, I I am getting to the subject matters and I really appreciate subscribers coming forward make a huge difference I'm not just saying that